Uh, Mr. Jen? Yes, good evening. How are you? Good, how are you doing? Great, is your client on board? Uh, yes, I believe they're here. I certainly see uh, Mr. O'Neill, the architect. And mm -hmm. let me see if I believe uh, Mr. Bader. Yes. Is, oh, yes. Here. My client yes. Here as well. yeah. yeah, we are here. Okay. For those folks who are part of this presentation, I'd like for you to show faces to the community, please. Thank you much. Uh, we're, we have a lot to go over this evening. I see that we have a packed house. Must not be a game on anywhere tonight. Um, so we want to make sure that we get time to go through this information. This meeting is an RCO meeting. A few weeks ago, we had the CDR meeting. The CDR meeting was set up so that we could, as requested by the Planning Commission, so that the community could see what the development looks like and how it's going to uh, impact in some ways the community. We had that meeting. Because of that meeting, there were several questions asked and several concerns. We asked Mr. Jen and his, and his uh, client and architect to go back to the drawing board and see if there was some way that they can respond to those requests and, and questions. And this is what he's presenting tonight. He will present the project after he presents the project, if you have any questions or concerns, then you, uh, we will call on you. Hopefully all you folks with your hands up will see you all because there's quite a few people on here. If, you, if we haven't called you, please feel free to put your question in the chat box and we will uh, go through that before we're over. After the questions have been asked and answered, we will then ask the Mr. Jen and his group to leave. We will discuss the project and we will have a vote. Anyone on here who hasn't been in the meeting before? No, I said yes, okay. So I'm really I'm really explaining that for the two of you. I only see two of maybe more of you, but I only have two eyes. But I just wanted to let you know how this is going to work. So make sure that if you have a question, you put your hand up, especially those that are on the visual. For you guys that are on the phone, we will try to call your number and you can ask your question. Uh, Raj, I saw your hand. Did you have a question? No, you asked who wasn't at the last meeting. I couldn't get on, so. No, I didn't mean last minute. I meant meeting at all. Oh. And I see a meeting at all. So I know you've been in several. Probably as many as I have. Okay, Cheryl, we, uh, anybody else? Before we get started? Um, Mr. Edwards from Baton Hill Neighbors, are you letting us know that you're in the, in here, on here as well? Okay, I guess he is. So we're going to ask everybody to put themselves on mute. If you're having a problem, just let us know and Cheryl will take care of it because we want to make sure that we are able to hear what's being presented. And I know that, the, that God, everybody has a question. I know I have several, but we cannot answer the same question twice. So it would be great if everybody listened well. And if you, if you missed a question, put it in the chat box if it hasn't been answered already, and we will try to answer it at the end of this presentation. Okay. Let me go through and make sure nobody has their hand. Okay, Cheryl, can you share with Mr. Jen, please? Uh-huh, I will. Yes, uh, please make sure Mr. Kevin O'Neill has uh, share permission as well. He's the architect and may have to show some slides. Okay, you're going to be the host, so you can share with him. Okay. He can, okay, yes. so you're a host now. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Jen, Thank what, you. We're, what we're looking for is for you to do your presentation. The list of things that you sent over to us that are have been changed, we need you to compare them to this with this 
original drawing or original presentation to this one. So you can let us know when the changes have been made. Again, I would like to see your team on site. We can't see them. Yeah, Chigai uh, and uh, Eli, could you please kindly activate your camera? <laughs> Yes, that's so, thank you. That's so we can meet you all and know who we're working with. And Eli, no, no, 100%. It was a mute because we don't start the community. You know? Okay, and Eli is your person as well? Yes, I am right here. I'm just trying to activate my camera. My you, name you, is need, you need as many lessons as I do, <laughs> Eli. I know. Yeah, I have a problem with that. Um, okay, it will take me a minute, but I will do that. Okay, we can continue in a while. Hey, Mr. Jen, you want to help him with that? Um, I, I believe I can ask him to start video, but I mean, let's see if that'll help him. Uh, one second, let's do it again, please. Yeah, I'll send that again. Unable to access camera. Uh. Okay, well, when he gets the presentation, he needs to be on, on camera. Yeah. Okay. I'll make, I'll make sure. All yours, Mr. Jen. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Zen Jen. I'm the attorney for this particular application, uh, which is 42 to 68 Church Lane, currently zoned industrial, uh, I-2 industrial. My client is proposing an application involving a new construction of what is essentially a multi-residential property a building on this site. We have received refusals relating to the use of household living as well as dimensional refusals related to that. What I'm going to do is share with you the refusal first, uh, which was shared at the first meeting, but it's easier to simply have it in front of everyone uh, before we start discussing the details of the changes to this particular refusal based on our last meeting with the community. So essentially, we're asking for a um, single detached structure, total gross footage of 173,811, maximum high 60 feet. Uh, the proposal was to use it with a uh, 173 square foot pilot house with elevator and balconies, uh, 74 interior parking spaces, uh, including 50 bike spaces for multifamily household living of 148 units. Naturally, this being an industrially zoned site, uh, the use itself is one of the refusals. The roof desk access structure uh, being 173 square foot is a little bit larger than, with elevators larger than what is permitted generally by code. So that's an additional refusal. In addition, uh, rear yard depth and side yard depth, uh, which is required, uh, is not met with our design. Now, so what do we change design-wise? Uh, before I turn it over to Kevin to go over the details of the changes, I'm going to just kind of uh, give you a breakdown of the changes itself. In First of all, we in our new proposal, you will see that we decreased the overall growth area uh, from the 173,000 square feet to about 156,000 square feet. We provided fifth floor setbacks along 75% of the building footprint. We introduced additional exterior courtyard spaces at floor two and five. Mr. Jen? Yes. Go down, please. Uh, I, I can put that up. Um, I okay. think Kevin's going to put it up as slides. Let me let me do this. Speak a little slower. Oh, okay. Will do. So do you want me to repeat any of the first three things I mentioned? Uh, from number two. Number two. Uh, provided fifth floor setbacks along 75% of the building's footprint. We introduced additional exterior courtyard spaces at floors two and five. We also decreased the residential unit count from 143 to 125. We increased vehicle parking spaces from 74 to 93. We also increased the bicycle parking spaces from 50 to 56. We're setting the entire building back from Church Lane by 10 foot. We are introducing tiered landscaping 
uh, plus street trees along Church Lane. We are now going to also provide two dedicated commercial spaces along Church Lane. And we also increased the number of dedicated residential amenity space at the ground floor. So what I'm going to do is turn this over to Mr. O'Neill, uh, give him host so that he can show you what we're discussing in um, more of a visual format and also discuss exactly what was changed uh, from an architectural standpoint. So let me, give me one minute, so I will turn this over to him. Uh, Mr. O'Neill, you're now host, so you, you're able to share and uh, show the, um, everyone what changes were made to the plants. Okay, great. Thanks, Jen. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thanks for coming out to our meeting. Uh, I'm going to go through some of the changes in a little bit more detail um, and also with some uh, renderings, some drawings, some different things that we've prepared to hopefully um, illustrate what we're talking about. So um, <clears throat> is the cover cover page up for everybody? Yes. All right, great. So I'll go quickly through a couple of these. I believe everybody's familiar with the site. Uh, in case you're not, um, these are a couple of site photos. We're at 42 through 68 East Church Lane, uh, several parcels. Uh, being assembled together. Um, we're about half a block from Germantown Avenue, which you can see on the aerial. Um, this, this street at the bottom here, this is Germantown Ave. We're a couple hundred feet away from there. You can see the big purple mast in the middle of the screen is our site. It's a little bit of an irregular shape. As I said, we've got a couple of parcels that are being consolidated together, uh, but that's essentially the outline. It's about 49,000 uh, and change square foot site. This is a zoning map, just to give you um, a little overview of what's in the neighborhood. I'm sure most of you are familiar already with your with your zoning, but I just wanted to recap this quickly. So um, this is an industrial industrial zone site, um, and you can see within about a uh, about a four block radius or so, there's a little mix of everything. So you've got a lot of CMX on Germantown Avenue. The, the red is the CMX. You've also got some of that on Church Lane itself. The purple is the industrial zoning, which is, again, which is what our site is currently. Um, and then the yellow represents RSA 5 single family. And then there's some orange in there as well, uh, which is multifamily RM1. There's even a little bit of that on Church Lane uh, immediately adjacent to the site. So this chart kind of illustrates um, in, a, in a previous to current format what we've changed. And I just want to go through these uh, line by line briefly, similar to what Jen just went through, but I'll go through it one more time. And then I'm going to show you some, some slides of what we actually changed uh, with the design. So again, our total gross floor area, floor area of the building has been decreased from 173,000 square foot to 156,000 square foot. Our residential unit count has been decreased from 148 down to 125. Uh, parking spaces we've increased, so we went from 74 up to 93. Uh, the bike, bicycle parking spaces, not a significant change. We've added six, but of note, those are on church lanes. So the original 50 are within the building. Uh, we had those last time, and then we added uh, six spaces, which are actually out on church lane, which you'll see in a, in a view that's coming up in just a moment. Um, so building setback. So this is probably, I think, the most significant thing that we've that we've changed. Um, we've pushed the building back 10 feet on Church Lane from the property line, um, and what we've what, what that allowed us to do is sort of align the facade of our building with the other buildings um, on Church Lane that we're adjacent to. Again, you'll see in another slide. Um, it really helps sort of decrease the bulk and the mass of the building right on Church Lane. Um, obviously, it's sort of a, a narrower street, 
And one of the, you know, one of the suggestions that we heard many times last uh, at the last meeting was that we were too tall, too massive for Church Lane. So, so we feel that 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 ten foot setback will will really help with that, um, reducing that height and mass. And and also what it effectively does is opens up the sidewalk. So we now have that ten foot. We, we have a seven foot public right of way on Church Lane, and now we also have an additional ten feet. While that is still technically private property, um, we've sort of opened that up and made that a little bit more of a, of a porous edge there. Um, so there's there's opportunities where we, we opened up the sidewalk so that that'll actually feel like a wider sidewalk when it's being used by a pedestrian. And we've also um, added some, some nice things, which we think are a, will, will be a plus to the streetscape. Um, we've added some street trees, we've added some benches, and again, the, the bike racks that I had mentioned before. So I'll show, I'll show these a little bit more in a, in a upcoming slide. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, the rest of these I want to go through briefly. Um, also, as Jen mentioned, on three out of four of our primary elevations, we've also added a fifth floor setback. So we've, we've pushed back the fifth floor of the building so that <clears throat> on the northwest and east elevation, there's a 22-foot setback on that on that fifth level. So effectively, when you're looking at this building from Church Lane, from Germantown, from really any of the neighboring streets, you're going to perceive it as a four-story building. The fifth floor is recessed back 22 feet, which we think again, you know, improves um, light and shadow conditions for for adjacent properties. Um, commercial spaces, we've added two small commercial spaces at the request of. You know, multiple people brought that up last time that that would be something they felt would be useful for this building. Um, we've got two spaces that could be combined into one for one tenant, or it could be split up into two. They're not large spaces. We don't think that there's a lot of demand for commercial on this block, but again, we wanted to respond to that request and at least um, incorporate that as part of the project. Um, residential amenity spaces have gone from three up to five. Um, those are more interior towards the courtyard and, and don't affect the the, uh, the streetscape experience too much, but we did want to list that. Um, <clears throat> and then, so again, the, the landscaping on Church Lane, we'll see in the upcoming slide, um, we were able to add street trees, benches, tiered landscaping, which we think is, is a, a nice improvement. So let me go through a couple of these. <clears throat> this, is our, uh, this is our ground floor plan. Briefly uh, of note here, what I wanted to point out, that the yellow that you see um, that is all space ded dedicated to parking. So whether it's the parking space or the drive aisle or the turnaround, whatever it might be, um, everything highlighted there in yellow is is what was required, you know, at, at a minimum to get up to the 93 parking spaces. So uh, there's 86 standard spaces, three uh, wheelchair accessible spaces, which are required by code, and four electric car spaces. Um, and I, I wanted to highlight this just because you can see how much of the ground floor uh, footprint is being dedicated to parking here. Um, we didn't quite get to that one-to-one -one parking ratio, which um, a lot of times is the is the goal, you know, to provide one parking space per unit. But we got pretty close, um, and I just wanted to show that with this much of the, the ground floor plan dedicated to parking to get to that one-to-one -one with, with this current building configuration, we, we essentially would have nothing at the ground floor um, other than parking. It would essentially be a, a parking garage on the ground floor. And while I, I absolutely sympathize with parking and how tricky it can be in, in different neighborhoods, including this one, we just thought this was a, a, a reasonable compromise of providing a lot of parking spaces, but also providing a nice experience at the at the church lane street level for pedestrians and then also for the for the building residents as well so this is a view of church lane um, looking down the street so again what, what i wanted to highlight here in our previous edition last uh, two months ago in april we we had the building uh, proposed right at the property line we've now pushed it back 10 feet and that that 10 foot buffer has given us a chance to introduce some tiered landscaping, some bike racks, um, some some seating, um, and then these these street trees, which with the with the seven foot that we had uh, available to us in the public right of way, we we wouldn't have been permitted to add street trees. So again, that was brought up last time. 
where are the street trees? Why can't you guys plant some trees here? And the simple answer is just the seven feet doesn't give us enough room to put a tree and then meet our streets department requirement um, for, for clearance for pedestrians to get through. So the, the sort of compromise here is we push the building back, we have this buffer, and now we can put the trees in that buffer. It's a little bit flipped from the typical way you would do it, which is put the street tree right at the curb edge. That's a more conventional approach. But again, we thought this was a nice compromise. The, the trees are technically on this property, but you get the same effect of um, having a nicer streetscape experience. <clears throat> this view um, is looking from the Germantown outside, also again down the street. What we wanted to highlight here is, it, yes, this is a five-story structure, but what you see on Church Lane is essentially a four-story structure. So again, with that setback at the fifth floor um, for, for three out of the four primary facades, we're set back 22 feet. And uh, for, from most vantage points, this will be perceived as a, as a four-story building. The fifth floor is set back much deeper into the, into the core of the site where we don't feel that it will um, impact a lot of neighbors. This is another view of the Church Lane facade, just showing a little more detail. Um, <clears throat> we've, you know, we're, we're showing in all of these views the slope of Church Lane accurately, as close as we can, what, what that actual grade change is and how that's allowing for this sort of tiered stepped landscaping and these benches. And we thought this, this turned out nice as far as um, you know, alleviating that, that grade change, still maintaining a nice second floor datum line, but then letting the street sort of drop down and we introduce that, the, the benches and the landscaping. So this is a view looking the opposite way towards Germantown Ave. And again, just wanted to highlight here that yes, this is a four story, uh, sorry, a five story building, but with that fifth floor setback, at least on a, a you know a vantage point from eye level on the sidewalk, we, we feel that we've decreased that mass significantly, and it fits in a little bit better in terms of being um, you know there's a lot of different a lot of different heights on the block, but at least now we're sort of maintaining that cornice line at a at a four story level as opposed to a five story level in our previous edition. So this is just a view of the interior courtyard. Um, this this particular portion of the building has not changed too much from what we showed you before. Um, I did want to note that our courtyard was squeezed a little bit um, by pushing the church lane facade forward. Um, I'm sorry, pushing it back um, away from the street to provide that setback. But we do still feel that we have a nice usable courtyard space here for the for the residents of the building. And then this view <clears throat> is sort of the other leg of that L. So the, the, the courtyard is actually an L shape. And of note here, uh, because we added all that additional parking on the ground floor level um, at this section of the building, we actually capped that at the second floor. So what you're seeing here, you see this wood deck and some landscaping um, and sort of this connected courtyard level. Um, this is raised up from grade. This is actually above the parking garage. So we thought that was a good way to sort of hide the parking, tuck it underneath and then recapture some of that space so that um, the residents here can have access to this elevated deck off of the second floor. And then just um, just a final view. This is an overview. You can see uh, this aerial shot kind of, you know, hopefully pulls everything together. What, what we just talked about, uh, the setback off of Church Lane, the fifth floor setback, um, <clears throat> and then, uh, you know, some of these other features that we've added, which hopefully help, you know, uh, make something that, that fits into the streetscape a little bit nicer and decreases the density, adds some parking. Um, hopefully we've, you know, addressed as many of the concerns as we could. I, uh, that, that sort of wraps up what I had. I'm going to turn it back to Jen and we'll, we'll be here to answer any questions that everybody has. Thank you. If you could just give me host again. <clears throat> Thank you. 
So um, I'm seeing a lot of questions uh, popping up on the uh, chat. So I wanted to kind of get back to those real quick. Um, Mr. Jen? Yes. I'm going to go with hands first. Okay, sure. Um, before uh, we... Go ahead. Before we get to um, the specific questions, there, there is something else I did want to bring to the attention of everyone that's here. And that is in the 23, uh, 2035 plan for the planning commission uh, for Germantown area, it is actually shown that uh, the this particular property would be recommended to be uh, modified to what they call IRMX use. So after looking studying the area, the Planning Commission's feeling is that these current industrial properties at this part near Germantown Avenue off of Church Lane uh, would be the best fit would be IRMX. And if that was the case, <clears throat> if that is the zoning that Planning Commission would be looking for, what we're actually proposing before you uh, would closely fit uh, the IRMX uh, requirements in, in many ways. The Actual, I, I don't know if I can share yet. Um, Kevin, can you um, transfer host back to me? Um, uh, I will. What uh, What do I need to do? Uh, right click on the three dots or, or just click on the three dots on my name, next to my name. Or actually, I'm sorry, go to my name on the list of participants. Click on the three dots. Okay. And it should give you the option. Sorry, Thank you. I just to, yeah. Thank you. So I'm going to share with um, with everyone a uh, portion of a document from the this is a portion of a document from the 2035 plan. So as you can see, um, here's Germantown Avenue. This is Church Lane, and this is actually shaped pretty much like the lot we're in, discussing and. As you can see in the 2035, this is the proposed zoning, not the current. Okay, so this is a proposed zoning for for the uh, 2035 plan, and that is industrial residential mixed use. So that is what actually within the Planning Commission's own proposal of the changes to make to these industrial properties in this area, they're saying that IRMX is a good fit for this particular type of property that was formerly industrial. So what we are doing here is actually IRMX allows a very similar usage because it's a mix of industrial, light, very light industrial and residential. So this building in many ways fits exactly what that kind of proposal would be. So that's, I just wanted to point that out as that is something the planning commission was uh, planning and, and discussing, of course, that does not mean that in the future it would be rezoned to that, but that is something the Planning Commission felt would be a good use for the property. Um, with regard to the some of the questions, uh, I'll turn it back to Ms. Love, and we'll try to answer any questions relating to our proposal. Uh, one final piece, I'm sorry, one final piece. There was feedback last time with concerns of people coming in that would not have stake in the neighborhood uh, my client and I discussed that, so we are willing to condorize um, the building as needed to make sure that people would become stakeholders in this project uh, so that it would not just be a transient situation, but that there would be more people that would actually uh, want to put invest, not, in, not just invest in, own, uh, in being in the building, but actually ownership of the building, uh, their piece of it. And that should also improve um, the the feel of the people that would be coming to uh, this particular uh, property in the future. So I'm going to turn, uh, Ms. Love, who do you want me to turn host back to for now? Or do you want me to hold on to it in case I have to share anything? Hand it back to Cheryl, please. Sure. I have uh, turned it back over. Okay, thank you. Cheryl, you good? I got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, before we start ask, asking, answering these questions, I'd like to hear from the people who are closest to this project. I see a, somebody there from Earlham. 
Uh, put your hand up again, sweetheart. Okay. Can you unmute yourself? Sure. I still have not seen what the Earlham Street view looks like. So would I see five stories on my side or four stories in my backyard because it's directly in my backyard. Okay, Mr. Jen. Uh, Kevin, based on, based on the setback, Earlham Street is uh, behind Church Lane. Is there a 22 foot setback from that side of the building as well? Yes, there is a 10 foot setback from the property line to the building itself. Then there's a four story building, which will be visible. The fifth floor level will be an additional 22 feet from there. So the total from the property line to the fifth floor is actually 32 feet. So you'll effectively see a four-story building, not a five-story building. So Earlham is behind um, our project, I believe, right? So it's on the on the rear side of the project, but you did set that side back 22 feet as well. Yes. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Earlham. <laughs> Is that Can you answer my question? Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm looking. You go, go ahead. Go ahead, um, Ross. That was me. I'm sorry, I know. Go ahead. I'm, I'm looking for the folks who are closest to the building. You can raise your hand. We can see who you are. Okay, Roz, do you see someone else that might? Um, Anna, Anna Albrecht, she's a near neighbor. All right, Anna, you had a question? Oh, uh, yes, thank you, Anna. Um, I was just, I remember a lot of questions being asked in the last meeting about um, the cost of the units, and there was a lot of input from everyone on that call about um, having affordable units um, in in the building and just wondering if there was any movement on that. Um, I think we said um, that the range would be between 1400 and 1600 on the uh, one and two bedrooms. So just would like to hear a little more about that. Um, and then just sort of a logistics question. Is it possible to somehow get a copy of the PDF of the presentation um, if uh, we want to look at it further while questions are being asked because we went through it kind of quickly. Well, I can't answer that last question for you. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> um, but we, we can answer the first question. I mean, we submitted, uh, we, we did send a copy of the full PDF. I don't know if um, we, I could share it if there's some page you would like to see, but unfortunately, I don't think it's downloadable at the moment. Um, so, uh, with regard to the affordable housing units, one of the things that uh, my client and I discussed was to make it, uh, make these units actually available uh, to be purchased. So in, in that case, rental, from a rental standpoint, they may not be particularly affordable, but these units generally from a condo rise perspective, certain units would certainly be more affordable than a house. I mean, we can't say Affordable housing is a tricky term because at the definition of what is truly quote, affordable housing versus what is somewhat affordable a house isn't the same. Mm -hmm. And we're not saying that we're, we're going to do, quote, um, state-defined affordable housing. Uh, that carries its own difficulties. And generally speaking, we are, and also we are already reducing the unit count as, as part of uh, one of the ways to reduce the overall mass and impact of the building. So further reduction in possible value of these units uh, could make it so that it's financially not feasible. Not to say that it can't be looked at, uh, but I believe um, Eli has uh, thought of that and discussed it with me. And certainly we felt that condorizing and selling portions to owners would be one of the ways to kind of offer a slightly more affordable unit availability in the area. Do you have like a, an idea of the percentage of units that would be um, condo we, uh, available be honest, for purchase? We, we don't know how many people would actually have interest. Um, my, my client can condorize the whole building and then sell what he can. And what the remaining units may have to be transferred back to a holding company that would then rent them. So that would be a structure we may go with because 
you don't want to counterize a building and then have it sit empty because we don't have enough buyers. So that's that's a concern we have. But we are willing to counterize as much as there's demand. I remember from the last meeting that your client said that there would not be any affordable housing. So now you're telling us that this is different from what we asked for? No, we're not. We're not. So that's all I want to be clear on. We're not offering affordable housing as the term is defined by the city or generally <laughs> understood. So it is still market rate housing. But we're, what we are willing to do is to condorize it so we can sell the units too, which makes them more affordable. So no, it, it's not Section 8 housing, no. No, okay. We, we're not asking you about Section 8. We're asking yeah, I, affordable yeah. housing. Because this is the same question that came up at the last meeting. So yeah. to be clear, because we're jumping around this for some reason. Yeah. Well, but to be clear, mm -hmm. you are not offering any of these hundred and how many are we at now? 143? It is um, units um, as affordable housing. 125 yes. units. We're, we're reducing right. it from 125. Yeah. Out of the hundred, yeah. out of the 125. Yep. Yeah. Can, can I? Can I just? Let me finish. Yeah, I'm sorry. Out of the 125, you are not offering affordable housing in any of these units. I just need a yes or no. Um, I believe Eli wanted to address that. I'm asking um, you. I'm asking you, Mr. Jen. I don't have, I don't have, I was not told that any of the units would be affordable. Okay, thank um, you. But my client is here to Okay, go ahead. That. Eli, what's your question? What's your answer? Uh, hi, Ms. Inez. Uh, hi, everyone. I know Ellison is also here. My name is Eli Kantorovitz. I am uh, one of the owners of this project. Uh, Directly answer uh, Ines' question, uh, we will not have affordable units over there. Instead of affordable housing, which normally means a bonus to increase the amount of units of the building and get as much as possible, we're not doing that. We're actually decreasing units per community request and we're offering to the community uh, to have a ownership in the building. Okay, that thank you. That will be the answer to your question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, are you are you finished, um, the young lady? I'm sorry, you moved around so quickly. Anna, <laughs> you lost me. <laughs> Anna, are you uh, yeah, yes, I'm finished. finished. Okay, Thank you, Anna. Um, Roz. Question? Yes. Trying to go back to my screen. I put in the question in the feed box. I'm concerned about the fire escape plan. When you get over two stories, we've already seen in West Philadelphia where we get a high capacity of <laughs> people in a building and the escape is um, fearfully not looked at. So are there fire ladders? Because you know you can't use fire escapes. And if you have handicap accessibility or apartments, where are they located? Um, before you answer me, the other question that goes with that is I put a question in about some buildings don't allow tenants to have um, Christmas trees or live trees or barbecue. So with this capacity of people and the different variety of diversity of uh, possibly clientele, where are you standing on fire escape and the use of these fire possibly people cooking turkeys on a balcony things like that just so we know for the neighborhood and the people in the buildings um i think i think that's a good question to direct towards uh, mr o'neill because um fire fire uh issue is definitely a building code issue as well um kevin can you kind of, I know we're still kind of preliminary on the building design at this point. This is more of a zoning, but can you kind of explain what um, what the building would have from a fire protection and escape standpoint? Sure. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, to, to be clear, I mean, we're, we're at the zoning stage, but we've, you know, this, this building is uh, designed to be fully compliant with all building and fire codes. So there, there's no, there's no gray area there. Um, just, you know, just to make sure that's, that's understood. But, um, so to answer your question about 
fire safety. So the, the building has two means of egress um, and connected fire rated corridors. So the way the building code and fire code is written, um, if there's a fire in one part of the building, you need to have um, the ability to take two different routes in case of a fire. So um, there's two, step, two separate stair towers, which um, can be accessed by a, a fire rated enclosure and then those exit to a public right of way. So th there's no, there's no, um, you know, there's no fire escapes, there's no ladders, there's nothing. That would be more of like a retrofit solution to an existing building. This is a, a brand new building which will comply with all modern fire codes. So um, we'll be sprinklered, we'll have fire rated enclosures, um, there will be fire ratings between the units. Um, and then um, I think this, Oh, I think the second part that I wanted to respond to was your question about, you know, people potentially having barbecues and fires and things on their on their balconies. So um, I, I would assume, you know, from an operations standpoint, that type of thing will, will not be permitted um, in terms of, you know, when you when you rent one of these units or lease a unit. I think that'll be clear that that's that doesn't won't, won't comply with the building rules. Um, but you know, obviously, there are situations when people don't follow the rules. So Again, I would just refer back to the, the building will be completely fire rated per building codes, which which take into account mishaps and, and weird things that, that could happen like that. Um, but but there won't be any ladders or, or fire escapes or anything that's that's not code compliant. So if you have an elderly person on the fourth or fifth mm -hmm. floor and there's a fire, mm -hmm. they can't jump out the window <clears throat> and right. get down the stairs as hard. So the, the answer to that, thank you, um, that, that was the other part I wanted to touch on. So the building does have an elevator, and we're required to provide uh, backup power to the elevator you for, can't, for cases like that. I apologize for cutting you off. You're not allowed to use a fire escape during, I mean, okay. an elevator during a fire. That's right. I'm just asking the question because of the density of the, the number of apartments and the back base on Earlham Terrace they need to know if you have a fire because even if it is what did you say 32 feet 34 yes 32 yeah. 32 is there a notification to the near neighbors that this huge building has a fire and the accessibility for the fire department to get to the rear these right. are just so, questions i don't want to take up everyone's time oh they're good questions that's that's important to, to ask. So on all of the exterior walls, so this is a, a protected building, meaning all of the exterior walls are required to be fire rated. So any any wall that you'll see from the exterior that's adjacent to a property line, on a property line, or within a certain distance to a property line will be a fire rated wall. Um, Which so means that's kind of for the building. public? What's well, that mean? it mean, it means that any fire that would could potentially break out in this building. I mean, first of all, the building is completely sprinklered, so that would be pretty rare that that would ever happen. But if a fire did break out, it would be localized by the fire rated walls. So it wouldn't it wouldn't have the ability. Those are either one or two hour rated, depending on how far from the, the property line we are. That's going to contain the fire spread for a certain period of time until the fire department can get there. Oh, thank you. And where are the handicapped apartments located? So the way this building is designed, there's there's no specific handicapped units. Um, all of these units will be Type B accessible. So there's no, you know, um, accessible and non-accessible units. All of the units from floors two through five, which is the residential portion of the building, will be Type B accessible, um, and that that's that meets our requirement because we are, you know, anytime you're over four units, you have to provide those. Um, uh, wheelchair accessible units, and that's also part of why we have a, a, a elevator requirement as well. Done, Matt? Uh, it'll come up later for those residents to move in because a wheelchair on the fourth floor with no elevator is virtually someone that's not getting out. But we'll talk about that another time. Yeah, I, I, I apologize. I, I just do want to say again that the, the, it's a fully sprinkler building. Uh, in every single unit, and also we're going to be directly connected with the fire department. So any alarm goes on, 
goes up, I'm sorry, it, very same second, the fire department will get the notification automatically and uh, the way it works, they respond even without calling us. So they'll be on site. It should be minutes because we, we are minutes away from the fire um, department over there on Germantown Avenue. Uh, so, uh, and again, it will be fully sprinkler system. Each unit will have a sprinkler system in it. Thank you. Okay, um, Mr. Eli, no, I'm sorry, Kevin. Yes. You, you mentioned that there were two uh, egress and an ingress. Right. right. Can you show that to us on the plan? Because you didn't. Um, you didn't. Kevin, it. if you can just tell me what page I. Oh wait. Um. Yeah. Let's. Um. I'll have. Uh. I'll give Shen the page number mm -hmm. so we can just jump to that. Just uh, let me. Just let me know when you get it, Mr. Jen. Yeah, I would need to be made host again. I can't. Mm -hmm. Share at the moment. Yeah. Cheryl's on it. Thank you. Um, I see another young lady, Earlham Street neighbor. Could you unmute yourself? The lovely citizen with the gray hair. Um, which page do you want me to get to? Here you okay. go. I'm talking to you, dear. Mm -hmm. Unmute yourself. Talking to me? No, no, no. It's a young lady. She's Okay, you talk, you're, 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 you're ready. Go ahead. You know, I'm I'm very perplexed with this. You know, because I'm I'm trying to figure out why here. You know, the, the building here. Why do you want to make apartments here? This, this is a residential area. Why you want to make apartments here when you have a whole spectrum of land to, to build? And I'm looking at the skyline of my house here and. I see barbecue pits on your deck upstairs on the roof. That, that kind of kills the idea that no barbecuing house. Well, they're going to do it regardless. Yeah. You know they don't follow rules. Who's got Who's got the answer to that question? Well, before, yeah, yeah I, I, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, before I get to that part, I think we were talking about the staircase on the plan. Okay, just um, briefly show it to us, please. Yeah, uh, Kevin, are these the staircases that are going to be part of the building? Correct. So you can see the, the loop there, and there's there's actually three stair towers. Um, one exits into the – one of the three stair towers exits into the uh, parking garage, and then the other two you can see are closer to Church Lane. Those have very close direct access right out to Church Lane. Okay, thank you. Sure. And now you can ask the young lady's question. Yes, I'm sorry. It, it, um, the question was, why are we building, right. proposing this here? Yes. Okay. So this is this is currently zoned an industrial site. So it it's a big lot, big size lot, and this kind of lot size properties. If we don't want to just do industrial, the most of the time the alternative is to develop something that's kind of a mix. Um, and again, as I was indicating with the um, Planning Commission as well, this is the kind of sites where these kind of uh, buildings with residential and other mix tend to be proposed. Former industrial sites or large sites like a school um, that closed down, that has a lot of land area, they tend to be redeveloped into um, these kind of buildings. Okay, but now also you have the Hammer Mill apartment building down here at Church Lane and Lena. Then you have Germantown High School that's sitting empty that you can develop uh, condos and apartments and all that stuff. But my my thing is why in this little teeny area? This is historical area, and you want to put modern day stuff in historical. Uh, I I actually well, hi ma'am. I'm sorry I didn't get your name. Um, my, my name is Zilla, but I I will answer that question to you. Um, Indeed, we understand it's a historical area. We're trying to work it out with the neighborhood because of that. But my, I, my, I strongly uh, believe, please correct me if I'm wrong, but it's for, for that very same reason, <clears throat> because it's a historical area, <clears throat> we're proposing beautiful building that will beautify area much more than you're going to have a abandoned property in historical area. Uh, that's number one. And number two, in regards of your question regarding barbecue, uh, absolutely no barbecue will be allowed at the building. That will be part, part of the conda rules and regulations that will be part of the management. Uh, but 
but uh, that's basically the answer to your question. So we, we do want to beautify, we understand it's a historical area, and we want to make it even, even better and nicer. Instead of having abandoned, sitting empty abandoned property that can cause a lot of troubles in terms of uh, um, uh, many other troubles. You know, any abandoned property, I don't have to tell you what, what troubles ca can be there. Thank you, Ilan. Um, are you done, young lady? I guess so. I mean, it's it's going. You're going to do what you want to do anyway. So I guess I'm done. And we you can't know? have we can't have that attitude, Donna. We no, gonna, I'm. We're going. We're going. We're going to work it out. We're going to work. I, it I, out. I feel we're going to work it out. I'm going to work it out. Okay, um, Gina, you say you're near neighbor. Yes, my question is. When you say that you're going to offer these condos to the neighborhood, is there going to be any preference to neighborhood residents, or are you simply listing the condos at market value and anyone can move in from anywhere? So it's going to be um, publicly offered. So no, we cannot do preference generally. Um, we, we had a similar project uh, done by a, actually an RCO in the city where uh, preferential, um, preferential offers were discussed. I think from a standpoint of um, once we get to a certain point in the building, my client can start first advertising closer in the neighborhood before mm -hmm. he opens it further out. But we can't specifically say we're just um, giving one group preference over the other. That, that tends to trigger other issues. Exactly. But that's my, I'm clarifying that when you say you're offering it to the neighbors, you're really offering it to the world and we just happen to be there. And if their market rate, I don't, um, how does that, benefit this neighborhood, which has a lot of economically struggling people. <laughs> so uh, well, we're, we're offering it out as ownership uh, because there was a lot of concerns with uh, the property being just purely a rental property. Uh, so what we are saying is that we're going to offer it to for ownership so that whoever moves into the property will have a stake in the area. I mean, that's always been kind of every every neighborhood has people that will eventually come in, some people will leave, but you want people that come in to have stake in the neighborhood and that's what we're trying to do. Thank you. Ms. Bailey? Yes, ma'am. I see you raising your hand. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't I didn't know my hand was raised. But oh. as you can see in my comments, I've had I have a lot a lot of stuff I want to say. Yeah, well, can can you just give us a question please if you want? What? Um, Ron, I mean, I'm sorry, on. Inez, before you go on, um, are, um, some of these people's hands have been raised, and I'm not sure if um, some of the people that are being called on are near neighbors. Yeah, I see that the hands are made, raised. I just want to try to get a couple of near neighbors in first. Okay. Um, is Ms. Bailey, I'll, I'll is Bailey a near neighbor? I am on West Queen Lane, so I am. I consider myself a near neighbor. Okay, ask your question, Ms. Bailey, please. I um I'm just concerned that mm -hmm. the proposal that you guys keep giving to the city is saying that the, the it has no negative impact on the community. And I just want to say that it absolutely is. I live in a historical home that's over a couple hundred years old. And mm -hmm. I feel like the historical value of my home will be going down while my taxes will be going up. And I if I was across the street from it, I would certainly be upset that I can no longer see the sky and the trees, which which is pretty germane to this area. That's just my comment. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I can address your comment. Uh, actually, we did speak to neighbors of the street. Some of them are very excited about this project. Uh, that's number one. And number two, as I have mentioned before, due to the fact it's a historical area, uh, when we develop buildings like this, it's actually, the market works total opposite. Your your houses will go up in prices. Uh, the, uh, regards regarding uh, it, it will the value of your properties will go, and you're you're, you're going to have much more cash equity in your properties. Those projects are the one who make neighborhood growing in value, having more equity in the in your house, and having more security. Thank you. Okay, um, I totally disagree. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, who's that? Ms. Bailey, okay, thank you. Professor Stu, you have a question? Unmute yourself, please. Yeah. Um, 
Oh. I'm here in Bird. <laughs> Stop. Hey, Oscar. Yeah. Hi. Oscar Weiser. Um, I live in the neighborhood, um, and I uh, am at the Germantown meeting. Uh, first question. Um, there's a excuse me a minute. Oh, go ahead. He he's muted. Go ahead. Ask ask the question, please. Okay. There was a reference to the planning commission. So I have a couple questions. There was a reference to the planning commission's notions of what Germantown will become in the future regarding zoning and etc. Um, do you know if the 2035 plan has been fully vetted with the community and neighborhood? Um, so that that's one question I have since we're um, talking about what the planning commission is recommending. Um, also at the last meeting um, and even a few people at this meeting, um, you know, we expressed concerns about the aesthetics and scale of the building. Uh, Church Lane is an 18th century lane, one of the oldest cross streets in Germantown that retains a historic 19th century domestic scale. Um, it's essentially a quaint street. Um, how does this design respond and scale to Church Lane or Market Square? Um, as a follow-up to that, I was curious if you'd actually completed a scaled drawing showing how the new building will appear from various vantage points on Market Square. I mean, Market Square is essentially like our town square. So, you know, while this, I do realize this has the most impact on the near neighbors, it is something that affects all of Germantown. It's one of our beauty spots. It's one of the most historic um, sites in Germantown. Um, and then also from a, an aesthetic standpoint, um, while the design may be beautiful in your eyes um, and attractive in a modern or denser urban locality, it, it doesn't really, you know, it, it's sort of, there's the Hamill Mills is, is a larger building down the street and this dwarfs that. Um, so I just wondered on an aesthetic point of view, how is, you know, how is this responding to the neighborhood? I don't think it is responding to the neighborhood, um, but I guess maybe since we're asking questions, how do you feel that this relates to the neighborhood and is respectful of, you know, what is essentially a nationally significant um, historic place, um, given that Germantown Avenue is a national historic landmark? Um, and then also... Hey, um, Oscar, mm -hmm. can you let him answer? Sure. Mr. Yeah, Jen, uh, Mr. Jen, you have this. Um, yes. Uh, so, I, I think one of the one of the issues is we're talking about we're talking about um, a design that's based on the size of the property as well. So, yes, you know, you have to keep in mind that we are not trying to do something that is exactly what is permitted in industrial, because in our opinion, that's even worse. So this is an industrial site that is, was an industrial site and is an industrial site currently. The 2035 plan from the Planning Commission actually was based on Planning Commission's meetings and feedback from local community. Um, so pl by pl Planning Commission, obviously you also consider other factors that, you know, not just the community feedback, but overall city development and other factors. The plan is not to say that it absolutely will happen. The plan is what the Planning Commission would like to see happen. And they do take into consideration, um, they, dis, they actually divide every district up. So uh, Germantown Avenue, this portion of Germantown Avenue is considered the northwestern section of the city. It has its own specific plan. It's over 100 pages. Um, I only brought out that particular page, which shows one of their specific zoning change aspect to this. But there's, there's actually a lot of information I would you know, certainly recommend you to look that up. It's uh, just just type up 2035 plan for the city and it's open to the public. Um, from design standpoint, part of the benefit of our communication with the neighborhood is that we are hearing your feedback and I understand aesthetics is very personal. So we are working with what we are trying to build, but at the same time, we're here talking to you to work with you on some of the design aspects the, the facade looks, if there are specific touches that are very um, of high concern to the community, we're here to try to work with that. But to say that this building cannot be that size for this lot, um, a commercial, an industrial building can be built would be the same size um, as well. So it, it, the size is actually permitted in that particular property. It's just that we're using 
a size building, but we want to use it for residential versus an industrial use. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and, and I just uh, I apologize. I just want to add to Oscar's question uh, and uh, to their community members. I, I, I want to describe the picture. We're fully aware of the uh, uh, historical site of the German town and church lane. We know about it, um, and we understand that. I, we cannot go back to 18th and 19th century. I can't promise you that. But we, we can, and what we're proposing over here, we want to take property that's completely empty and might be very much pretty soon abandoned. And instead of that property, we're proposing to build beautiful building and meet your criteria, meet your requests. That's what we're trying to propose it and work it out with you. Thank you. No one's asking you to go back to a 19th century uh, view, but uh, built, there are buildings built all the time in cities and places all around the world that fit into a built environment. This is pretty basic. Um, and I am still going to press on the question, which is have you prepared drawings to show the scale of this building from Market Square? That is our town square. Yes, yes. that question. No, I don't believe we have. Uh, Kevin, have no, we you have one of one of the first views that I showed okay. uh, was from further up Church Lane, closer to German Town Ave, on the same side of the street as Market Square. So, I mean, if you were standing in the square, you'd be mostly obscured. But if you walk to the edge, closer to Church Lane, um, we essentially showed that view. If you just pictured, you know, zooming out fifty feet or so, that's essentially what that is. Um, if you'd like to see that again, we can we can try to pull that back up. But that was one of the very first images that we presented. Okay, thank you. Um, we're going to move on. Uh, we're going to go back to professor. Um, yeah, I, I haven't. Okay. I wasn't able to uh, speak because I was having issues unmuting myself. Okay, there you go, professor. Go ahead. Yeah. So, um, regards to this project, I believe is a good thing for the neighborhood. Reason being is because. For one, with their offering in regards to stake, you don't find many developers doing this. As it pertains to individuals within the community uh, being able to get stake in this project, that's amazing, especially to expose it to the neighbors. A lot of times, developers don't even expose that the neighbors have an opportunity to stake in these type of projects. Also, in regards to what this building is now, that's an industrial building. If a business owner was to lease out this building today or tomorrow and open up a mechanic shop, that neighborhood will be contaminated with fumes of body paintwork, loud noises. You know, it, it just doesn't work out. The building is abandoned. It doesn't contribute in regards to the uprising of Germantown. I've been in this area all my life. I've been inside of you know, lifestyles that were not too pleasant. So I know that this neighborhood needs that new construction. If you look at the area of like Germantown and like Worcester and Germantown and uh, what is that, uh, Seymour, those new projects and, you know, developers buying property have moved those criminals out the way. If you look at the Chinese store where individuals were heavily selling drugs, and people were getting killed and shot. Someone just got shot in the head and killed on Germantown Avenue. That Chinese store was purchased. You don't see any drug sales anymore. In regards to our elders, it allows them to walk outside peacefully. You have to be honest. If you look at any, you know, uh, apartment building in the city, we rarely see the residents outside of those apartment buildings. You probably see a few walking down a block with their dog or something like that in the community, but you rarely see those neighbors. Also, it makes history within this historic corridor because the history that will be made is that new construction is introduced inside of a historical area. Also, I have met with some of those developers by me driving past those um, projects, by, by this project, because usually developers they don't even speak to the neighbors. These guys are willing to allow the neighbors to be hands-on as it pertains to even helping with construction as long as their business is in order, as it pertains to licenses and you know, uh, uh, insurances and so on and so forth, this is a great opportunity. Also, it's an opportunity for young guys like myself, you know, 30, 30 years old plus, 
or in that realm to be homeowners in that area, especially if you are from this area. Now, in regards to like affordable housing, you have we all have to be honest with ourselves. Even without new construction, what house is affordable here? In that area or surrounding areas of Germantown. You can't find a house that you can get for nine hundred dollars a month. And, and and the property rent and value is rising. So for those homeowners that are in this area, it, it benefits all the way around. Right now, that is a abandoned uh, piece of land that doesn't beautify the area, that heavily contributes to crime. You know, it, it just needs to be removed, especially it being on that little area there. The, the industrial building is not Sue. on the industrial corridor. Professor Sue? Yes. Thank you very much. Good. Yeah, do you have a question? Professor, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Okay, can you please my, give us my My big question is, in regards to the neighbors enhancing their lives as it pertains to becoming homeowners or give, giving opportunity uh, to uh, be involved in staking the building or even witnessing with their eyes seeing the property and the area beautified with this new construction, why refuse it? Right now, we have an abandoned lot in that area that today or tomorrow, a construction company can move in, a mm -hmm. mechanic shop can move in, and really disturb us. We don't, we don't, we don't know yet what the outcome of the vote is, so we haven't. There hasn't yeah, been discussed it, 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 yet. So why don't, why don't we? For us, with this mentality of us not being able to afford, this is where. It, it boosts us to, you know, get better with creating businesses, get better with approving our credit so we can enhance and be, you know, uh, and, and, and get opportunities with these developers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I just wanted to say that. I'm sorry. Um, Yvonne, you had a question? You're still muted. Hello? Yes. Good evening. I I wanted to him to show us the site plan again. Mr. Jen. What is your okay. question? My question is to see the site plan again, please, to, to point out what what the rear setback is. Hey, Kevin, did you have that uh, on your packet or you want me to show it on mine? Uh, whichever is easier. Okay. Uh, let me let me go ahead and play it up. Uh, what do you recall? What page that would be? Yeah, I'll get it for you. It's uh, page number. Uh, if you go to, I think page thirty six would be the easiest to to read. Yeah. Yeah, zoom out a little bit. So there's, um, and I think this question might have been in the chat, so I'll, I'll try to answer it. But so there's a there's a 10 foot setback along the rear property line, and the additional setback which we were referring to is at the fifth floor level. So there's that's a in the front of the building, isn't it? The I'm sorry, did, were you looking at the rear or the front of the building? I'm, I might have misunderstood. I was looking at the rear of the building. And I thought you had set back on the fifth floor only at the front of the building. Is that, I'm just trying to understand this change. And I no, thought I okay. understood it until I heard you describe that you had a 32 set, a 32 foot setback when the lady from Earlham yep. asked her question. Sure. So, um, Jen, maybe you could go to 23. That's an aerial view, which might, which might show this a little bit better. There we go. So at the left side, upper left side, that's the that's Earlham Street in the distance there. So there's a 10 foot setback from floors one. About, to I'm talking about at the ground level, please. Right. There's a there's a 10 foot setback at the ground floor level from one from floors one through four. That answers the, my question. I think you told I want the lady and from Earlham to get the correct information. And you said it was 32 feet from her on house. house. Floor, on the fifth floor. That doesn't help the lady from Earlham because you have a, a building that is right on her back, her rear yard. It's still the same. 
Well, it's it's the difference between what would look like. She was um, saying, would I still be looking at a five-story building? And I think the answer that came out was no. The fifth floor would be set back 32 feet away from your property, and therefore you would not see it as a five-story building. So she'll see a four-story building. That right. is correct. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I, I just want that fact clear. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hodgkins. Mr. Halsley? <laughs> Yes. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Can you ask your question, please? Uh, yes. I have three perspectives here. First thing, my family has been in Germantown for six, <laughs> 63 years, so I know the area very intimately. Number two, I'm a local pastor, and we own a 25,000 square foot building right on uh, the 500 block of Penn Street. We cover the entire block. And immediately adjacent to us is King Manor Apartments, which is a four-story building very much so on the order of what's, what's dealing with here. So I'm not just a person talking about the Bogues project. We live next to an apartment building immediately next to us. And there's, there's probably about an eight foot, 10 foot fire lane between, uh, between them and us. And then between the residents, there's maybe another six foot fire lane. And then behind the building, there is a, I think it's about a 22 foot fire lane because the train station is there. So I know firsthand what it's like living to some, living next to something like this, not what you propose. And then the last piece is this. I own the business right there at 409 11 West Queen Lane. I'm a commercial builder with a degree in architecture. And I'm so I speak as a local leader. I spoke as a, as a person that's been invested in Germantown for 63 years. And I speak as a professional. This property, while you're trying to maximize the economics of the property, this building does not fit this this neighborhood. It's too big, and I understand you tried to reduce the scale. and It don't fit. It's an arbitrage. Why can't you do what they did on Wissickin Avenue? If you look on Wissickin Avenue, right off of Coulter Street, down that way, they had a property just like this, right around the corner from me. It's a block from me. And instead of trying to put an abatross of a building like this in in place, they built three-story townhouses, and they sold them for $300,000 per unit, and it fit the scale of the neighborhood. This does not fit. I'm sorry. While I I, I commend the fact that you're trying to make an investment here and bring new people here, which I think is wonderful, Uh, uh, the fact that, you know, you can do things to a building to make it blend in historically, because Germantown is like that. We have a collection of historical buildings as along with modern buildings. But the scale of this, and I understand you're trying to work the money out, but since you've come the direction of wanting to sell them, I think that the money would work out because you're doing it market rate. If you look at what they did on Wissickin Avenue, they got parking, they got three-story townhouses, it fits the scale of the neighborhood, and I don't think you would get all this feedback that you're getting from the neighbors. I speak as a seasoned person, professional person. I have a degree in architecture, yeah. and I owned a business for 38 years right here in Germantown. Thank you, Mr. Halsey. Can you answer that question, Mr. Jim? I'm sorry. The um, I, I think I'm, I'm not sure the exact question. I believe that was more of a statement. Uh, yeah, it, it is a question. Why Why this big abatross of a building? Why can't we do something like you've seen on Wizard and Avenue? You go right around here and see it. It's right down the street from me. I live, I live the, my property is 240 feet on Penn Street, 501 West King Street. Immediately next door is King Manor Apartments, the four-story building. So I know firsthand what it's like living next to something like this. And I'm telling you, this don't fit the scale of that little small street. It just doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. That's, not that's not even a two-way street. Uh, I, I, I actually have you, have, I, have, Here's the question. Have you, have you, question considered, now, Mr. Jim? Have you yes. considered what I'm saying? Okay. I'm, doing that. I'm sorry. I, I, I actually will answer. How are you doing, Pastor? Uh, I will answer that question. We we made uh, all the calculations. I, I'm sure Wisakin Avenue is a beautiful project that maybe fit into the budget of the developer. However, we went back and forth. Uh, we had seven different plans, and it simply does not work. And one of actually plans were your proposal to build over the single, st- single town houses. 
three stories with the parking, it, it, it does not fit. We will be uh, in, in the fail if we're going to do that. We're going to fail the project. So from the economic what, perspective, what, from excuse, the investment... Excuse me, sir. Mr. Hartley, why, why were they Mr. able Hartley, to do it with Hooker Avenue? Mr. Hartley, can you let him answer, please? Yeah, but why were they able let to do it with Hooker answer, Avenue? Please. And you're talking about you can't do it here, and, and, he, and the property's not even as big. Mr. Hartley, I, can I, you I, let him yeah, answer? I, 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 I will explain uh, as much as I can in a, in a short uh, notice, but basically uh, we, uh, the, the two main reasons for that, the property and with uh, Hakim, uh, the cost of the property cost much less than we actually purchase, uh, purchase it for. That's number one. Number two, the construction budget. The, by the time they develop and today, uh, ju just the frame, just wood, if you are in that business, you know it tripled not double tripled from that time the project was developed so the cost of the project does not make any sense that basically will be the answer and the only the only way that project will make sense is getting those uh 125 apartments uh we are ready to offer it to community we want to offer it to the community to have affordable housing also we we believe that um, our prices will be really good because we do not have to put so much money into a single apartment rather than, in your case, uh, three story, uh, uh, three sto four stories, uh, 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 single homes. A hundred, so we, a hundred, we, 104 units is an I building next to me. Thank you. Four units. Thank you. Co Eli, correct. thank you, Mr. Hosley. Jim, you had a question? He really hasn't answered my question. Because this okay, is well, we, okay. Mr. Hosley, Mr. Hosley, we, we have mm -hmm. a hundred and something people on this call. A hundred and fifty. Everybody, people. we want everybody to have a chance to at least speak. You so didn't that, you, you can see that when you other spoke. Thank you. I, I've said it to everybody. Thank you, Mr. Jim. Yes. You had a question. Me, no, not right? Jim. Jim. Oh, oh, Jim. Yes. Sorry. So I I reversed my camera because I live right across the street from the, this proposed project. Can everyone see the image, right? So that little two-story building there, that is 70 East Church Lane. Two stories next to it is three. There's the Nolan property right there. From what I can tell from your drawings, that tree line, <clears throat> which I really am very fond of, will be gone. The sun comes up basically behind that two or three story building. The sun comes up over there. That'll be gone. It's important to see this with your own eyes as opposed to drawings because drawings, you have to use too much of your imagination, <clears throat> right? So I just wanted people to see what it is we're actually looking at here. And imagine the scale. <clears throat> St. Luke's Church is back there. I don't know if you can actually see that, the steeple. That's probably, I'm going to guess that's four stories, three and a half, to the top of that steeple. So this entire skyline will disappear. And I think that's wrong. Also, I have on good authority, there's another buyer ready to step up with a much more compatible project, completely architecturally compatible with what we already have around here. And I've been talking to them, others have been talking to them. And I think that if this fails, you're gonna see something much better in that spot. Thank you. John? I know, um, I know I'm sorry, excuse me, Inez, before you go on, um, I think it's a few near neighbors who. Uh, I'm a near neighbor. Okay. okay. Um, I'm any other Earl near Street neighbors? neighbors. Uh, um, yeah, mm -hmm. just, I just called on John and, and she said she's a near neighbor. I'm an Earlham Street neighbor. My parents and I both I own go. houses I on go. Earlham Street. Thank you. Um, my question, I put it in the chat on the original meeting as to why this particular area, as everyone else has stated, and not a block away where the buildings are abandoned and zoned for residential. There's an apartment building right at the corner if you cross the street. 
that's zoned already. Why this particular area blocking people's driveways and the back of their house? I don't want to see a barbecue pit and somebody nude, naked on the balcony when I look out my bathroom window. <laughs> so we actually, um, actually speaking of those balconies, we actually removed them from the back side of the building that was on the original plan. Um, part of that was, uh, and the fifth floor setback was also part of the um, ways to reduce the impact in that sense. But yeah, we took away the uh, balconies on that side. The fifth floor setback, I'm not on the fifth floor. As the young lady stated previously, that has no bearing on my view. My view is from the first floor up. At fifth floor, I don't even see that. What I'm concerned about is the people that I don't have the comfort. <clears throat> I've been in this neighborhood and I own that house. I've owned it for 30 years. So it's not about home ownership. My parents own the one next to it. It's not right. And this is a historical area and we'd like to keep it that way. Me, myself. Thank you, John. Mr. Jen, you want to respond? Uh, I, I don't know what exactly I'll be responding to in that particular comment. Why not, uh, why not build it where it's appropriate? It's a half a block we, we away. Don't, we don't own that lot. I mean, my client owns this property, not that property. That's one of the basic fundamental reasons why they're not looking to develop a different lot, because they don't own it. I mean, you've you got to work with what you have. But... You don't have a zone for residential either, but you're trying to make it residential is zone for industrial. So why not make it industrial if that's what you're looking for to make use of what it actually is now? As you just stated, it's not residential. It It is not residential. And um, I believe my client actually looked at uh, the possibility of a industrial use that would be financially viable. Um, I may have that information if you give me a few minutes. Sure. Um, so, you know, I, I think there was a um, a discussion between my client and the architect over the uh, use as a commercial. I mean, as an industrial. Motion detected at the front. Okay. Um, you going to try to answer that, Mr. Jen? Yeah, I'll try to find that information real quick. If you and, can just uh, and have someone. John, we'll come back. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, I actually, yeah, I actually can answer that question. We, we, if we go to industrial by right building, we can build a little five-story industrial building without any setbacks, without anything, without asking anybody, and it will block up not just skies but the whole neighborhood. Uh, so we actually trying to avoid that to work out with the neighborhood to for example, build beautiful building uh, instead of going by right and, uh, and uh, building much, much bigger facility. But it's industrial, which means it'll be temporary. Workers will come and they will go. We won't be without parking and we won't have 125 plus new neighbors in a neighborhood that is not fitted for it. Okay. Industrial means they're going to come to work. You won't have 125 employees. And we won't have to worry about it. John, thank you. Thank you. Listen, I understand everyone, this this is a very passionate issue. But I would ask you that we want to have folks ask their question. We cannot sit on here talk having stories. If you have a question, please put it out there. Let it get answered. Somebody else may have that same question. Okay. Um, Butch. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Butch Ben, and I represent the Philadelphia Building Trades. Okay, and I Butch, go Butch, Butch, hold on for a minute, please. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, please just ask the question. I, we'd appreciate it. Okay. okay. Go ahead, dear. I'd like to know if the project is going to be built with Building Trades workers. Um, I know uh, in Germantown, there's a lot of residential and they look like they're undocumented workers so i'd like to know what a project like this in a predominantly black neighborhood does the owners look to come to the building trades who can provide black workers for a project like this if it goes forward so that's my question Great uh, I, thank uh, you, I, 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 yeah i will answer your question uh, thank you so much for the question 
Uh, actually, uh, I am minority too. 99% of our employees are uh, from uh, minorities. We give a chance and, and, and uh, to give a bid to anyone, uh, but as long as the price is uh, fit to our budget, we do not d differentiate between uh, any race or color. Uh, and like I said before, uh, I am minority as well. I represent minority community and uh, over 90%, close to probably almost all of them, are, our employees are from minority communities. Our subcontractors, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, did he answer your question, dear? Butch? No, nah, I, I, I know the gentleman, his workers ain't black. Okay, thank you, Butch. Um, Neil? Ah yes, um, I had uh, one one question about uh, uh, the building becoming condos. Now, from a functional standpoint, and I've been a realtor for a number of years here in Germantown, Mount Airy. Uh, I, I cannot, for the life of me, understand how you're going to rent it up, and people will actually be buying units in a rental building because my experience says exactly the opposite. So I want to know what's fluff and what's real. So please tell me. All right, who has that, Jim or Eli? What's fluff and what's real? So basically what, what's going to happen is it'll be condorized, okay? So once you condorize it, the condos will be bought. There will be a condo association. Now, the association can vote to allow rentals or they could not allow rentals, but usually the developer, until the property is fully sold out, can still use the other property, you know, other units until such time it's sold. But generally, if it sells very well, it would just be sold out very quickly. Okay, so initially, then you you will not be looking to rent anything out. That this is a condo building that you're constructing, and you and depending upon uh, the the uh, eventual ownership of the uh, uh, building by all the people there and how they vote, whether they will or they won't allow uh, uh, rentals. So this is not going to be a rental community. Is that what you're saying? Our great, goal would, great question, Neil. I was trying to figure that out myself. Yeah, our goal would be to have a, um, have a condo structured for this building, yes. So, so you, you will not be doing any rentals? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, is that what you're saying? The individual yeah, owners, we, we, yeah. Because you changed from last because, meeting. It's, it's either yeah, no, I, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I I'm used to functional things and how things work. And I've been yeah. doing this a long time, four decades <clears throat> in the area. Yeah, I, and I will I, tell be, you that uh, what I see with existing buildings, even with existing buildings, when they decide to condo, everyone's gone in a year if they don't buy. Now, when you're coming in with new, it's been my experience, that they're rentals. So if you're telling everyone that they can buy into it, you know what? That's fluff. So I'd like a real answer, please. Uh, I, I will give an answer. Uh, we, we do not fluff because if we would be interested in rentals and rentals only, we, would, we do not have to condorize this building. We would live it. What we're offering over here is to condorize and give opportunity and chance to any homeowner who wants to be a homeowner to buy. Uh, so there is no definitely fluff over there. And uh, the main reason, like I said, I will repeat myself, for the rentals, we do not have to condorize them. And we so, intentionally, we intentionally go on to condorize it to give a chance, chance and opportunity for home buyers to purchase their own, their own homes. It, it goes without saying, you'll forgive me, that when you're building condominiums, they're condominiums, and it's a condominium building. So any 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 nonsense about rentals and how how many people would actually be buying condominiums and, and right. mind you this for market rent uh, for market rate units you're not having people going in there who are going to use the 23 and pub and walk over to Washington Lane to to catch or, or uh, uh, Chelton Avenue to catch the train at night. There are going to be people who have their own vehicles 
Now you're talking about an area that is already uh, 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 has has a fair amount of density. It's a one-way street. You have historical building there. You have museums there. You have businesses right there on Germantown Avenue, and a lot of them will will park right up Church Lane. And especially on Sundays when church is open, there's a lot of demand for parking, and there's very few parking places for the people who live on Church Lane. And and I'm not just talking about today, because as Germantown continues to develop, places like the Deschler Morris House, and when you're standing in the front of that Deschler Morris House, and you're looking at this historic Market Square area with the beautiful buildings, you know what? It's like having a huge drive-in movie in front of a tent. That's right. That's right. how dynamic yeah. the difference is. So, so I understand about new construction because I think it's the best thing you can do to revitalize areas. However, it has to be uh, uh, done in a mechanically thoughtful way, and what I'm hearing is not that. Thank you, Neil. Thank you. Did he answer your question? Yeah, yeah I, I'm sorry. I, I, okay. <laughs> Eli, you... Uh, do you answer the question? It's either condos or it's rentals. Which one is it? Yeah, like I like I said, we condorizing this offering to anyone who wants to buy it to purchase it. That will be the priority. However, if we won't be able to sell it, we uh, or whatever we won't be able to sell it, we are going to rent. But the priority yeah. over here, and that is the reason why we condorizing building from the beginning, is to give a chance and opportunity. The home buyers to purchase a home for themselves. I know it walks I, in my talk. Thank you, thank you. But I would I ask, walks I would way. ask you, Eli and Mr. Jen, to. Last time we met, it were they were apartments. Now they're condos. So you guys need to figure out which one this is. To me. Oh, hold. On. I'm sorry, Inez. Before you go on, everybody who's already spoken, um, been called on. Could you please put your hands down so. Um, we don't call on you again. Thank you. Tommy, you had a question? Yes, uh, thanks. Hi, Tommy Forrest with Historic Germantown. Uh, I'm sorry, I said everyone. your name wrong. I'm sorry. What is That's it? fine. That's fine, Miss Love. Tommy. Okay, Tommy, I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. Uh, so I'm representing Historic Germantown. Uh, we're a near neighbor. Our headquarter building is just up the block in Church Lane. Um, uh, I would just briefly um, uh, reiterate what a couple other folks have said, that the view from Germantown Avenue and Market Square is also critical, um, not just to near neighbors, but the entire community. So this, this is both a near neighbor question and one for the entire Germantown Northwest community. Um, regarding near neighbors, um, a couple things. One, there seems to be a change in the, the cladding on the facade. Um, now, mostly just the um, Church Lane facade is brick. If, it, if the facade from visible from Germantown Avenue is not brick, it cheapens the look even more than it already does. Um, the scale is, is completely out of character with a small residential lot. Um, my question, though, it, again... Okay. Uh, last time we asked for um, better and more accurate uh, light and shadow um, uh, modeling that has not, not been done. I mean, Jim's um, impromptu camera, <laughs> I think, showed us, uh, indicated what would happen, but the majority of the near neighbors would suffer significantly light and shadow. I also, and I'll um, speak for myself, but I imagine others may feel the same way. We were told point blank last time that there was absolutely no um, chance that this would ever be used for light industrial. And to have um, the, the owners threaten basically to say, oh, we could, if we sold, we used it for industrial, we could build to the line and do this, that, and other, when you point blank said there was no chance of it being industrial. Again, we've heard five different stories in two meetings. Come to the lab. This is ridiculous. That's that's all well, I'm just saying. Okay. Yeah, so I, 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 I the credibility I, I, is is not here. Yeah, I I would like to answer. Thank you. Your, yeah. I would like to answer your question. 
number one, God forbid, we do not threaten, we lay out the facts. And we, again, do want to work it out with the community and make the community happy. Uh, this is number one. Number two, indeed, I cannot and I don't have a great answer what, what is going to happen with the sun and how much sun you're going to lose. I, there is no disagreement over there. I can't tell you what's going to be with the sun uh, after we develop the building. But what I can assure you, what we're proposing over here, you might have a sun, but you might have also abandoned building that will cause much more problems than a shadow. And, and that abandoned building, we're ready to take it out, all the problems that might occur over there, and present beautiful facility that neighborhood can benefit from it. So again, I cannot bring more sun to you. I agree with you. But what I can do, what we can do over here to save this specific street and maybe even neighborhood from a lot, a lot of troubles that any abandoned building can cause. I have to tell you about it. You, 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 have, uh, you, you know about it yourself. You know what abandoned building problems and troubles can cause. And that's what I can do. Um, this is basically my answer. And God forbid we do not threaten and we do want to work it out with you as, and address all your questions and issues. Thank you, Eli. Jared? Yes. yes. Uh, yes ladies and gentlemen, before Jared speaks, it's now 744. We're going to take questions only till 8 o'clock, then we're going to vote. Go ahead, Jared. So, thank you. Uh, the last meeting, Mr. Shagai, um, mentioned that he did not own the property. It was a, a condition of sale to get the variance. But earlier in this meeting, he used the word buy and bought. So do you own the property currently, or is it just conditionally um, sold? The, 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 the currently property is conditionally sold. We have invested tons of money into this property, into this development. Uh, we have uh, some time to do actual purchase. Uh, but we look at, uh, at this development as our development. Uh, in, in amount of time, enormous amount of money uh, to work it out, all the details, to beautify and make it as best as possible. Um, that basically the answer to your question. So you do not own the property, and if you don't get the variance, you will not own the property? Is that correct? We actually will own the property. We have a plan, plan B. Uh, but uh, we do not have a pen in hand, do not own the property. But what question, what will be with the property, it's totally a different question. Did he answer you, Jared? Yeah, and now I'm curious about Plan B, if you can tell us what, what Plan B is. No, he, he's, uh, he's uh, going to bring, I, he's going to bring, I, I, he's going to have to bring Plan B back. Okay? I, I, I would like to concentrate on our Plan A. That's, All right, this he, is our he, discussion. Thank you, Eli. Susan, your near neighbor, can you ask your question, please? Thank you, uh, Mr. Shigai, Mr. Jin. Um, I have a fine suggestion. We do have apartment houses in Mount Airy that are more aesthetically pleasing that would accommodate the amount of apartments you're looking to build. And what I would suggest would be something that is set back further, but taller. Something in the style of Arden Apartments. Make it thinner and make it 50% of the footprint, but go up more. It's that, way, that may trigger... You will have more green space and it won't make it slender versus rocky and open up the courtyard and have more green space around so that it's not as imposing on the neighbors. You can look at McCallum Place, you can look at Arden Park. I don't know if anybody would be down for that idea, but it certainly would be more in keeping with the neighborhood. I, I actually w w would, would like to address your question. Thank you so much for the suggestion. Uh, wow. I, you do want you do you do want to know about me? I'm also in a healthcare business. We provide home delivered meals to the seniors. We deliver uh, over a thousand meals to just the Germantown community seniors, and I provide senior uh, adult daycare services. Uh, one of the one of the 
things that we really work it out over here is to have an inner inner yard if we're going to have a seniors uh, part of this building because I do know and understand probably very much how much they need it uh, and that is why you However, do see the uh, that and that's why you courtyard that, could be open to the street yeah yeah so I, I just I, I'm, I'm about to answer that and the reason why we did it inside instead of doing it in front or outside just exactly to address the questions of previous homeowners who live in front and in the back they do not want to see anyone they don't want to see anyone uh, walking with the whatever was the language used uh, so we made it more private we made it more private for the for the homeowners in a street behind we made it more private for the homeowners in the street up front and still maintain this beautiful yard uh, for the for the um, um, people oh, who are Mr. going to live in, in that building uh, yeah. this is this is Eli actually my name is Eli, Eli I'm sorry yeah yeah I we traditionally have houses with yards in the front we have traditional apartment houses that have large spaces yards on all four sides that do not impose their physicality on the surrounding neighbors you could do uh, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you when we're talking about a uh, single home, but uh, no, our, concern, uh, uh, yeah, our concern was if we do a backyard or front yard and the tenants will be there and will be uh, tons of people, it will somehow disturb the neighbors. So instead of doing that and disturbing the neighbors, we addressed that issue, uh, did smaller setback, made a uh walking area park area whatever, whatever you want to call it recreational area inside to maintain and keep the privacy for surround for surrounding neighbors but you don't have privacy if you have someone's window looking down on your house from 10 feet away okay. set it 50 feet and go up further uh, 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 yes uh, i i agree with that uh, as well and you but, know uh, that inner courtyard is just going to be dingy and ill lit it's nothing thank you thank you susan thank you three one seven seven three nine we have you have a question gentlemen with three one seven seven that's three. greg palmier oh greg you have a question yes i do um, i have a greg you have a question yes i do okay uh, I was a longtime customer, longtime resident of Germantown, a longtime customer of Nolan's, and I was approached by one of the Nolan's uh, when this property went under agreement. And he knew I had been in real estate, known real estate, because he saw me often buying materials there and knew I was a realtor. And he said, Greg, he said, I got to tell you something that we've decided to sell the property. And I said, oh, that's a shame. I said, I'm sorry to hear that. And he said, what do you think of the idea of townhouses? And I said, well, is that what they're thinking of doing? He said, yes. And my question is, did you ever mislead the original owners, the Nolans, into thinking that you were going to build townhouses on this site? That's one of my questions. Uh, yeah, I will answer that question. I never said to the owner, we're going to build townhouses over there. Uh, that's okay. number one. Yeah, uh, okay, I, I, I think I answered that pretty clear and straight. We never mislead it, we never said it to the owner, what we're going to build. Uh, whoever said it, I do not, I do not uh, uh, want to suspect any, any, um, any, I do not want to have any assumptions. It is possible, maybe somebody else told that to the owner, uh, maybe realtor, maybe broker, I have no clue. Me, as a buyer, never mislead the owner offering to build over there a townhouses. Frankly speaking, we we do not tell the owner, whoever is buying property, what we are going to build. We do not discuss that with the owner. Oh, really? Thank, Thank you, Eli. What's your second question, Greg? Okay. My second question is, do you have any other projects in the city of Philadelphia that you've done that we as neighbors can take a look at and talk to other neighbors about? Of course, we have uh, we have developed a lot in uh, Old Kensington. We have developed mostly abandoned uh, properties, blocks, and lots. 
we have developed a lot of in, in uh, University West Philadelphia, University City, close to University City, uh, which is uh, Girard Avenue, all, all, all of it abandoned. We specialize in abandoned properties. We make the blocks beautiful. We uh, bring in the new spirit to the neighborhood, uh, and we uh, try to do the best job possible. Uh, can you give us address, please, of those areas so that they can be checked out? Yes, you can you can check it out. Uh, twenty let's start with this. Twenty four forty can you put it in the chat? That would be good. Yeah, Just yeah. If the address is in the chat, that'd be good. Save time. Yeah. Also the other yes. question I have is Church Lane is a very narrow street. You can only park on one side of it. Uh, fire with a building of this size, five story building and this many units. Have you given any consideration to the fact that uh, being such a narrow street, parking only on one side uh, of, yeah. of a fire or something? What, yes. Like, given that consideration? Yes. Uh, the fire actually was one of our one of the major concerns. But like we have mentioned before, a uh, building is fully sprinkled. The sprinkler system will be in every single apartment, including the hallways, as well as a building will be connected directly to the fire department. Uh, so we actually put maximum security that has to do with the fire into the building and did uh, uh, everything according to the code and some of the things we went, I think, over did. Okay. And, and trash collection. So I, I take it this is going to be commercially uh, trash. This isn't going to be city. is not going to service the trash here. So you're going to need dumpsters and a big dumpster truck will come down and, and take the trash. Is that what's what's your idea or facilities for uh, sanitation? Who's going to take yes. care of that? We, we actually planning to have private company, uh, hire a private company to pick up trash. Um, and uh, that will be the best because like this trash do not have to then stay in the building or on the street for a long time. We have a dedicated trash area, uh, trash room in the building that the trash will be collected so the neighbors will not bring it. I'm sorry, the owners uh, or the the rentals, whoever is going to live in the building, will not take it outside. There is a dedicated trash room. From that trash room, there is a access to the pick, to the truck uh, uh, that will, that will come directly there. Will pick up the garbage uh, and uh, will take it out from the building. And this is from Church Lane or from Earlham, or where will this access be? That this big uh, trash truck will come in. The, service the, access, the, the access will be right from Church Lane, inside the parking lot, and the trash room is all, uh, it's right in front on the left. Thank you. Uh, last question, Christian. Thanks, Ms. Ennis. Um, I had two questions. One, do we have a traffic report uh, for us to review, look at, because as we know, Church Lane is one of the only free parking streets in the area, and that definitely is going to be chaotic um, when events and things are happening in the area. Um, and my second question is, do we have a clear understanding of what we're willing to do to make this work with the community? Because I hear you saying that a lot, but I really would like to know like what where we're at with thinking of community benefits? Uh, yeah, I, I uh, do not have a traffic report. Uh, maybe uh, Jim does have it. We're going to ask him a second to answer your second question. Uh, we It's our second meeting. We heard all your concerns at the first meeting. We addressed uh, almost all of them. Uh, we fixed all your concerns in terms of what has to do with the building. We are trying to work very hard to address all your issues. Uh, and uh, to be the most sufficient to, um, to present them. No, we do not have a traffic report. Um, that's that wasn't uh, prepared at this point. Okay, are you interested, or is that something on your timeline of things that you're looking to get because of set of the traffic concerns? I mean, it's something that can be done. If um, again, we'll. It's something we'll be bringing back to discuss among ourselves after this meeting. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Reverend Chester, you're the last person. 
Good evening, everyone. Let's understand that we only, as RCOs, are here to listen to the community. And we want them to feel out that the RCOs are not against having developments, but we want to make the development suitable and fit in the community. These questions that everyone has been presenting to us, we are documenting them, and then we'll make our final decision. Thank you. All righty. Um, thank you so much. We are going to ask Mr. Jen and Eli and the architect to leave. We'll discuss this briefly, and then we'll take a vote. All right. Thank you very much for uh, having us. Uh, have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, I, I also want to appreciate everybody. Thank you so much for uh, having us and working out. Uh, we really appreciate uh, all your concerns and questions and uh, looking forward to uh, work it out. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay, have a good evening. Um, we have a number of people on here that I'm sure want to participate in the vote. So what we're going to do is we are going to hear from the near neighbors first. And when I say near neighbors, I mean the folks that are adjacent to this project. Then everyone else who has a, uh, who would like to vote, we put a link in the chat. You can hit on that link, put your vote in that box, and it will be calculated after this meeting. So is there anyone that's on here that is an actual near neighbor that would like to have a question and participate in the vote? Um, I have one question. Inez? Yes. Anyone saying they want to vote, can they put their name and their address in their, not just their vote, so we know who they're with and how far away they are? Well, they in, the, in the, sur in the, uh, in the survey, they, they have to include their address. Oh, thank you. And for the folks who are here that want to respond, for the vote now, you we need to give you you need to give us your address as well. So, um, Elizabeth, you, you're a near neighbor. Yes, <clears throat> I live directly across from the front of Nolan's. You can Where's see on Church Lane. You can see the gates right out my front door. I'm halfway down the Church Lane block. I'm the only house with a driveway in front of it. I'm at number fifty three. East Church Lane. Hold on a minute, please. Okay, 53. Yep. East Church Lane. Okay, and what's your vote, Elizabeth? My vote is no. <laughs> Okie dokie. Thank, Thank you. you. Anna? Yes, thank you. Um, I'm at 201-03. Church Lane. Mm -hmm. And my vote is no rejection. Goodbye. No rejection. Goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Susan? Hi. I don't, I think I screwed up the near neighbor definition. I'm on Morton Street. Yeah, you did. So you got to go and put yours in the chat. I will. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Liz, Liz, are you voting? Liz Fullerton, me? Yes. Yes. Um, What's your address? Uh, 78 and 80 East Church Lane. I share a wall with the proposed site and I vote no. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Raphael? Anes? Yes. Anes. Yes. Uh, I just helped Ted out. Ted, they were, they were having trouble putting the link into the uh, chat. The link okay. is in the chat, and they can vote now via the chat. Okay. So the folks who are not this near neighbors can go into the chat now. Every Everybody can go into the chat. So we want everybody to go in? Everybody can go into the chat. The only ones that you're going to need to uh, ask, ask any questions are the folks that are on telephones. Oh, okay. Good. That okay. Saved, that saves me. Uh, I only see... Um, 
I only see one. Three one seven seven three nine. I see that telephone. Would you explain uh, again how we do the, the vote? When you go, yeah. you can go into the chat, and there's a link there that's for the survey for the vote. You I just on it, and then just fill the information out. I just see particularly when I go in the chat. The again. link, uh, hold on. Um, the link is coming from um Charles because I couldn't um close my screen down to um pull it up and paste it in. So it's under Charles Richardson, and it came in at um, 8.01. So if you go to that link. All right, I'm pushing the chat. I'm pushing the chat, and when I look here, I'm supposed to put in his name. That that link does not work. Yeah, it says it's closed. Yes, I tried it too. It said closed. Okay, hold on. Yeah, it does say closed. What's up, Charles? Can't you just count the hands if they raise their hands on the picture? Everybody's got to show their face. They suppose we, we want we want to know who's voting. Oh, well, how do we vote then? Just snow you roll down. Let's let's figure it out. I just voted on that. The form was open for me, so I just put on that form. How did you do it? When you clicked on the link, I clicked on the link. I don't see the link. It should have just opened up because we tested it several times. Yeah. Go ahead, Ms. Earl, and tell us what you did. So if you go to the link that Charles put in at uh, 7.59 and you click on that link and it takes you right to a type form. And then the first question was, oh, now it's saying it's closed. So I don't know. And That's what I'm getting. I opened it. That's what we've been saying. It's closed. Yeah, it's closed. Okay, names. okay, okay. Right. Um, Inez, keep going. Calm down, Calm down everybody. I want to ask you to please recognize the people who are entering their votes in the chat because a lot of people have already done that. If they haven't, if they haven't put their vote into this, the, what we're offering now, then they we have to do. They have to do this because well, we don't okay, know. We we are not we, offering it. It's closed. We don't, Excuse me, just, just be calm, people. We got, we got it. Because we want to make sure that everybody that votes, that everybody has a chance to vote. And, and also, and only, I'm sorry, Ines. And also, and it, this this is being recorded, so I have the chat. Um, we will go over the chat again. We And I'm looking at the chat, but um, we'll go over the chat yes, and yes, yes. pull up the information. So if you put your information <laughs> in the chat, we have access to that. But until we can figure this link out and why it's not working now, Inez is telling you what to do. So we'll just go in the chat and put the vote no, yes or no, and give our address. No, I'm, I am now asking the question as I was earlier before I got. Go ahead, ask uh, it. I am a next door neighbor. So How do I vote? So I'm we, next door. So we will continue. I already got Susan, right? Hold on, Garth. Susan, you said no, right? But because but oh, you're not I, I real, but you're really that. not a near neighbor. Well, I am. No, you roll. Okay. <laughs> Elizabeth. Yes. Are you a near neighbor? Yes, I live and right said, across. And you and you gave me your address, correct? I did. It was fifty three East Church Lane. I live right in front of the front gates of Nolan's. Okay, I got you, darling. Thank you. John, Thank you. You're a near neighbor? Mm -hmm. Unmute yourself. I'm, near. I'm Antoinette Anthony. My address is 39 East Earlham Street. I okay, vote slow no. Down. Slow down. Slow down. 39 Earlham. East Earlham Street. And you vote no. And my father is next to me, and he is 41. East Earlham Street. His and name is votes. John. And he votes? No. Okay. Uh, Raphael, your near neighbor. Thank you. I am a near neighbor at 45 East Church Lane, right across from Nolan's. 45 uh, East. And your vote? My vote is no. Thank you. 
You're welcome. Thank you. Gina, did I get you already? Yeah. Um, no, I don't think you did. Okay, go ahead, Gina. I'm Gina Michaels, and I'm at 5535 Lena, L-E-N-A Street, right on the corner of the 5535 Lena? Yes. That's what I said. I just saw David Knight. We cannot hear Macbeth. Oh, shit. 59. Sorry, so 535 Lena, and your vote is? No. Thank you. Uh, thank you for running this. Oh, God, thank you for coming. Mr. Snow Lippert? Garth. What's his name? Garth. Garth, I'm sorry. Garth, are you a near neighbor? Yes, I am. I what's live your, on the same block. What's your address, dear? 5424 Lena Street. Same block. Okay, and what's your vote? No. Thank you, Garth. Ann, are you a near neighbor? <laughs> Ann ain't there. Miss Peters? Okay. We'll go, we'll Hi, go. hello. This is Ann. I am here with Garth, but I actually don't live in the same place. And I'm not, I put my vote in the chat. I'm not a near neighbor. Okay, thank you. And, and Miss Earl Ham Street, you already put your vote in? Thank you, darling. Okay. Karen, are you a near neighbor? Somebody serenading us. Okay. Yes, I am a near neighbor. What's your address, Karen? 90 East Church Lane. And what's your vote? No. Okay, thank you. Twami, I mean, am I saying it right now? You are. Oh, good. <laughs> Thanks. It's a tough one, I know. Uh, we're at 5501-03 Germantown. Um, the vote is no. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Wayne? Uh, my answer is no. I live at 61 East Church Lane. 61 East Church? And you say no? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Professor Stu? Is he a near neighbor? Yes. We'll find out. Yes. Professor Stu? Yeah, I'm a near are, neighbor. Are you a near neighbor? Uh, yes, I am. What's your address? 5133 Marion Street. What? 5133 Marion Street. Okay, you need to put your, you need to put your um, vote in the chat. Yep. Because we, we're looking at people who are adjacent to the property. He already did put his vote in. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Clark? Hey, guys. Um, yes, near neighbor, 5427 Germantown Avenue. Vote no. Thank you. Uh, Susan, you need to put yours in the chat as well, right? Yeah, cut. Uh, Got the early. Are you near, I'm sorry. J uh, Jared, are you a near neighbor? Uh, hi, yes, I am. 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 I uh, Oscar, you put yours in the chat. Butch, are you a near neighbor? You have to unmute yourself, Butch. You'll no, I'm not. A, no, I'm not a near neighbor. No. Okay, can you please put your your vote in the chat, please? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Joanne. Joanne Sharpless, are you voting? Uh, I voted in the chat. I, okay, I live um, in uh, West Central Germantown. Okay, thank you very much. Earl uh, Ham um, Street neighbor. Here we go. The young lady with the beautiful gray hair. We spoke earlier. <laughs> yes, I think the I vote no. Okay, what's your address, dear? It's 43 East Earl Ham Street. Okay. 
You vote no, right? I vote no. Thank you, dear. Thank uh, you. You're I, welcome. I, I think I was skipped. I'm a I'm neighbor, just neighbor on the thing. Okay, I'll come I, back up to you, darling. Don't go away. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, Swin Miss Swinton, where did she go? Where do people keep moving around? Yeah. Brenda so iPhone. Want to change your name. Brenda iPhone. Uh, that's uh, I'm not a near neighbor. Okay, put your check. You put your vote in the chat, please. And uh, Miss Swinton, you, you're muted. Okay, I don't, I'm not sure that I'm a near neighbor. I'm in the unit block of Culture, 34 East. Okay, can you put your your uh, vote in the chat? I put it in the chat. I put it in the chat. <laughs> Thank you, Rod. You want to put your vote in the chat? Um, Mr. Ramos, are you a near neighbor? I I am not, and I I voted in the chat. Okay, thank you. We already got you, Susan. Right? Is anybody on here that's a near neighbor that did not vote in the chat? Put your hand up, please. Yes, my hand is up. I have a hand up. Just as neighbor. Okay. Um, 45 East Earlham. Wait a minute. 45 East Earlham. And your vote? No. With two notes. Okay. We got it twice, darling. Thank you. Uh, okay. We're going to the second page because I think I got all you guys on the first. Anybody on the second page that has not voted? In the chat, just raise your hand and I'll call on you. Nope, nobody. Uh, this is Hope Primus. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. I am not a near neighbor, 512 West Coulter Street. No. You have to put your vote in the chat. Are you on the <laughs> phone or individual? Uh, I did put it in the chat. I just wanted to give you the confirmation. Okay, thank you, Don. And thank you. Have a good evening. Good night. You too. Thank you. And we're on the third page. Anybody on the third page that is not a near neighbor or that is a near neighbor that did not put their vote in the chat? Okay. Page number four. No. Oh, you on the phone, sir? Yeah. Yes, I am. Eight. Hey. My name is Roger Dr Roger Drummond. Seventy-seven East Church Lane. Wait a minute. And I vote no. So you roll a minute. Yep. 77 East Church. East Church. Yes. And you vote no. Yes. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Okay, last page, number five. Oh, we got we lost some people, huh? Okay. I think they're dropping off for, as they go on. Yeah, I'm looking for any other hands. I don't see any. I think Jim has his hand up. I, I don't, his his video seems to be down. Well, I, if he, he has, has the, oh, there the he little is. symbol. Yeah, you had a, you, you're voting? Jim? Yeah, Jim is going to vote no, and I think he Anna voted. He voted no in the chat. I can see it oh, in the chat, in, but in he the is chat. a new neighbor. If he's in the chat, Jim, are you voting? Unmute yourself, please. He's definitely voting. He's three doors down from me, and his vote is going to be no. He just needs to speak up. Yeah. No is the vote. There you go. <laughs> and what's your address? 69 East Church. And what's your vote? No. Okay, thank you. Thank uh, you. I don't see any other hands. I'm going to ask Ms. Battle, are you a near neighbor? Um, I live at 42 East Coulter Street. I did, did you put vote your vote in the, in the chat? chat. Thank you so yes. much, Stone. Okay. Looks like we got everybody. Um, RCOs will send their vote in to, to us. Mr. Rodriguez? 
You had a you had a vote. I know. I just had a question. That's. I think I didn't see any. Uh, I uh, or anybody anybody voted yes. Is that no. correct? There may be in, there may be some yeses in the chat. We don't know yet. Right now, it seems like we've got a resounding no, but we haven't got the the answers out of the chat yet. There were at least two in the chat. Thank you. Any other question? No, nope. I'd like to make a statement on, on this. Who who is that speaking? This is Ted Stone speaking, and please, Hello. you guys, forgive Hello, me Ted. for. Forgive me for the technical difficulties. First time I ever did it, and I guess I couldn't get the hang of it this time. Thank you we all. We appreciate your help, dear. Okay. Did you did you ask Jim Dragoni his net his vote? Yes, we did. Okay. Miss Anes. Yes, ma'am. Before I hop off, I just want to say thank you for leading us through this one. Um, appreciate yeah, it. I need I need, I need, need a drink. Got crazy. I'm not a drink. I need a drink. And I'm not <laughs> I, I don't to even drink. Too, Miss I, I don't even drink. Go ahead, they ever start paying me for this stuff. I'll be rich on it. Could, could we check to see if all the Earlham Street neighbors voted? Well, we can't do that unless we get in the chat because I have Earlham Street down here several times. So I'm I'm hoping that they all did. I, I, so I, I tried to call on all of them. I know. Okay, so I don't know that we missed anybody, but if we did, let's hope that they're in the chat. Uh, before you all go, um, I'm going to keep it open. Um, so as you, if, if you haven't already voted and you need to vote in the chat, it'll still be open for a while. Um, and after you vote, if you need to <coughs> put something in the chat, then you can just jump off. Okay. Mr. Arnaz. Yes, ma'am. I mean, yes, sir. I'm sorry, Reverend. What are you going for the RCO? So are we going to say y'all uh, vote now or not? If you want to, but we can... We can't wait until we discuss it. If you want to vote, then you're more than welcome to, Don. You and Belfield says no to this project. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. wait. Rev, you're no, you don't have standing in this one. I don't. I just want my. <laughs> you don't have standing in this one. You 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 vote as an individual. So Reverend Chester is voting no. She and Belfield, Reverend Williams. No, Reverend Williams is voting no. She Belfield's not there with you right now. I got you, Rev. You know what I'm saying. I got I you. what you're saying, too. Hello. Charles, have a nice day. I'm going to play you. <laughs> I got you, Rev. You know I got you. We got to check in those addresses real, real good because we got pointed out somebody from the office. Yes. Can I can't hear, can hear, hear what you're saying. Who is that saying, talking? Ms. Sinez? Yes. This is, this is Ann Dolly. I have a question. Um, how can we um, be kept informed as to what's happening next and and that kind of thing. Well, the only way for you to know is if the, the developer comes back to us before his hearing and says that he wants to present again, then then he will he can. We cannot force him to do that because they are only responsible for one meeting. They've come back to us a second time. If a meeting is called for a third time, then he will be responsible for uh, making sure that the people who are affected get that information. Well, um, my and if there is a and when and if you have any in, any concern about being at the ZBA hearing, that information is on the the uh, notifications that went out. Okay, Miss Ines, my follow up question is: um, I heard, but I don't know myself um, that a lot of times the ZBA sometimes rules against it, the, how the neighborhood votes. So, what would you like us to do um, and to strengthen? this no position that's happening? What is the best thing we can do? Well, I think that we've had over 115 people on this call tonight. And something just tells me, just a little inkling, that there, that is no. But if you're concerned about that, then it would be good for you to, to join the ZBA hearing. And you, know, you can always write a letter down there and tell them, we don't want it. And, and that's always been the, the premise, the idea. You've always had the opportunity to say no, yes, or not opposed. That's been from the very beginning, from the CDR meeting to this RCO meeting. You, some people will got misinformation, but right now I'm telling you what it is. The CDR meeting was done because planning commission requested that we do that. 
We didn't just come up with this idea. Then they requested that we do the RCO meet. Everybody that has been um, connected to the developer and planning and identified was notified. That was the responsibility. And I'm sure that because you guys have that information, you, you got it from somewhere. So I'm sure that you'll get the next information that comes out. Okay, well, I thank you very much. And thank you for the meeting. Thank oh. you. You guys should send me some flowers or something. This has been yeah, cool. this is, 830, this is, yeah. 30, 830 uh, at night. I haven't even question. eaten. My kid is looking at me like, what's wrong with you? Question, did, did, did they actually close on this property or is it contingent? Is there a zoning? Mr. It's Harvey, contingent. you weren't listening no, because that young man asked it's him contingent. that question. Jared asked him that question several times, and he said he hasn't bought it yet. It's contingent. And the reason love, I'm asking is because okay. Mr. Halsey, Mr. Halsey, I love you. I love all you guys. No, 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 ma'am. Ma no, have, no, no, no. have, have, have a great evening, everyone. Okay, point of clarification, Charles. Yes. The neighbor across the street that they had, they had should, somebody else was interested in the problem. Should the members of our RCO vote individually because they voted to go with the neighborhood? So I asked Charles as a point of clarification for the number of people in the meeting. I had three people that were on. Should all three people vote their thought individually? Three people from 49? Yeah. If just listening so we could vote. But we go with the name. You're, you're yeah, not we, voting as the 49ers, though. You're voting individually, yeah. right? Right. So each of them should vote on their own if they attend it, if they want to vote. Yeah. Right. Yep. In the chat. Thank you. I didn't get Mr. Richardson's vote. He doesn't. I don't Mr. vote. Richardson he doesn't, doesn't vote. vote. You live in the neighborhood. He does not does vote. Not live in the neighborhood. He does not vote. He's here and uh, assist. He's here as technical uh, assistance to me. Yes. He should have gave me a break if he was helping me. <laughs> Hello? Hello? So I have a question. I have a question. I, have. Um, I see the town hall building is something, and it says guests. Who is that? We see that at everyone's ass. Anne Marie. I think it's Anne Marie Dooley. I don't know. I think that's Anna Marie Dooley. Oh, okay. I I I wasn't sure. I see. So to clarify, guest, everyone wants to do the mystery guest. She said so. She said so in the chat. I think. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Bye. Good night. Have a great evening. All right. Take care. Happy June. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Miss. Bye. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Bye, Pam and Gracie. So question. quiet tonight. Happy I, I know. Wow, Thank you, everyone. Make my statement. Wow. Census is no. <laughs> Good job. Thank you, darling. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Cheryl. No. You're welcome, Inez. Thank you. Thank you, Ted. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Ross. Thank you. Oh, we're the Reverend Chester, Reverend Chester and uh, Solo. I didn't, and I think um, Pin Knox, not Pin Knox, um, Baton Hills. Baton Hill, Baton Hills, thank you. Good night, y'all. Good night. Go, Good night. Eat dinner. Go ahead. Go eat your dinner. You can leave. You can leave if you're finished. If you have nothing else to put in the chat. Nina, you, you essential? Did she go?